working on an Audi A4. It's a 2.0 turbo. B is a it's a B 8.5, and it's leaking coolant, so we're doing off the water pump housing. Yeah, it's leaking coolant off the water pump housing. You can hear it turn on right now. We're doing a full coolant system overhaul on this car. You've shown the reservoir. It's empty. It's completely dry. There's nothing in it. Yeah, the reservoir oh, look, is it's leaking empty. out on the, it's leaking out in the driveway. And it's leaking. Great. All right, we got a full coolant overhaul kit for this car. Comes with all this stuff: water temperature sensor, the O-rings, silicone hose kit. We got the aluminum water pump kit, and all the pulleys, belts, everything. You it's full lifetime on, warranty on the kit. Just throw it in there. Yeah, and we got the coolant, the G12. G12, yeah, special coolant. So that's what we're doing today on this car. So we'll walk you through everything if you are doing this job on your own Audi 2.0T or it works on any 2.0T model Audi or Volkswagen. Yeah, we got a new reservoir tank to complete the setup and everything for the. Everything for the coolant overhaul is from USP Motorsport, and it seems like a well put together kit. We'll see how well it goes on here, if it's an easy job or not. The A5 is gone. This is what replaced the A5. So the A5 is gone. So we'll be doing more mods in the future on this car. Possibly exhaust. And Turbo upgrades and whatnot. We already have parts. Yeah, we already have parts, but those are for other videos. Right now, we're trying to get maintenance done. Any maintenance that needs to be done on this guy. Right. I need flat blades. I need socket set. I mean, to do the water pump change, you got to remove this hose. You need to remove the reservoir. And we're also replacing uh, the distribution lines, which is the three piece connection off of the reservoir. And right here. Three piece connection. Yeah, we have all new hoses. It's a full overhaul kit from USP Motorsports. This Parts. is unboxing. We got all this stuff. It tells you on here what it's for water pump bolts. Yeah, and, everything uh, is labeled. Yeah. And then this one is for the belt off of the pulley. That's a special bolt. When loosening it, you got to make sure you do not break that bolt on there, or you're going to have a hard time rebuilding. That's a uh, balanced gasket. This. For the water pump, yeah. Okay. Oh, cool, connecting. And then these are more water pump bolts. This is the one. This is the new water pump. This is the Jiba, made in Germany. And I believe, yeah. Yeah, it's an all aluminum. Yeah, all aluminum upgrade. So this is everything from the kit. Yeah. We got the coolant right there. Pentosin. Pentofrost. Yep. That's the temperature sensor. Yeah. All right, let's get started on this install. We got the brand new silicone hoses right here. Yep. So T30 for the water pump bolt. All right, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take off the engine cover pop it from the back and the whole thing comes off and put it to the side you just put that to the side next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take off the upper inner cooler pipe that leads to the throttle body it's just a flat blade yeah we'll just take that off using a flat blade and then also once you take off the pipe you're going to want to cover the hole because you don't want no uh, dust or anything getting inside your inner cooler Loosen here, you loosen down bottom. It's just a regular flat blade. Yeah. And then we'll just try and pull this off. There we go. And pull it off over here. It's kind of hard, but you just gotta loosen it. There it goes. It hasn't been taken off in a while. It's got oil in it. 
yeah it's got oil in the intercooler pipe that's normal this car is gonna have to get an oil catch can installed later on that'll be in another video you got anything to block the hole with block the hole with a little bit of bubble wrap and then we'll try to take off these hoses off the reservoir which I believe are just held in with these clips you can try um, for these clips do you have to pull them off that's good enough you don't pull it up too much you sure yeah there we go so you just Pop pull it, it up halfway in. and uh, be careful they don't fly off and then I believe there's another clip in here which is a little bit harder to get to I can see it through here are you replacing that hose no but I'm taking the reservoir off and the hose is kind of in the way so oh, can't you just move to the side I'd rather just take it off there we go and then just try to pull it out it has the same clip you just pop the clip and pull it out <sighs> if I can get it to release you don't have to remove this hose, he's just choosing to remove it. Yes. If it was me, I would just push it to the side. So loosen the hose off of the back. Yeah, the back hose, same thing, flat blade. Pry up the clip halfway and then slip off your hose. And then just try to pop the hose off. And then this one, we'll just move it to the side, out of the way. Next, you use the reservoir is held in with two 10 millimeter that's 10 millimeters we will just break that loose we will be replacing the reservoir so this one will not be reused be easy if you have some power tools and we do have a power tool Oh, we did? The Milwaukee ratchet. That's what I use for everything. And then we would just lift this off. And it just has a connector, the, yeah, the connector that you will pop off. And then you just got the one hose in the bottom that you will pull off. It just has a metal clip holding it in place, a retainer clip. We'll put these back on here so we do not lose them. And then we will disconnect this hose by popping the metal clip loose. Just pop the clip up with a flat blade and just pull the hose off. It should just come straight off. There you go. It will leak out a little bit of coolant, but that's no big deal. And we'll just leave the hose on down here out of the way make sure to disconnect the sensor push the tab in and pull off and that's it the reservoir is now out and push that wire up out of the way okay this reservoir is cracked so i have purchased a replacement reservoir right here so we have a There's brand new brand one. replacement but you need to reuse this uh, piece in the bottom. Here. Yeah, it's just for the bottom spacer. It's the mount. Swap it. that over and just pop it back on here, and that's it. You also re need you need your lid back. Yes, I forgot to purchase a new lid, but this lid does work. So I'll be placing it on a new reservoir. And then that's it. This is the old reservoir. There's your new sensor connection. It has a cap on it. Just make sure to take that off when installing onto the engine. The electrical connectors there have to be disconnected, right? Yes. So I will disconnect this bracket here and here. Yeah, two bolts. One there, one there. Yes. Alright, these two bolts right here are T30. Uh, yes. 
So we'll be taking out those two bolts right now. I'm not sure if we have to take off the connectors yet. We'll find out after we get the two bolts out. We just want to get this harness out of the way. All right, we got that out. Move that out the way. And where is the water pump? Oh, well, it's right in there. So I'll put these two bolts back. Yeah, catch the two bolts back on so you don't lose them. Don't drop them. Okay. That's good there. From here. Just pull this one. Like so. Push the tab down. Quick release. On that connector. Same thing with the upper green connection. Push the tab down. Pull it off. Same thing with this one. Like yeah. so. And like so. pop the wires off the clip. And then, like so. And then, that is out of the way. You just fold it downwards. There they go. Fold downwards. Yeah. And you unplugged what else? Unplugged the sensor for the... Uh, yeah, unplugged the sensor. Yeah, off the throttle body connection. Because I'll be removing the throttle body connector. And taking the throttle body off. Let's see what size bolts those are. Those are also T30. There's four of them. Yeah. Where's the second one? Yeah, it's right there. I don't believe there's two more in the bottom. Oh, here's an extension. Find the last one, I'll see it. Okay, so crack all four throttle body T30s loose and then take them off and take them off one at a time. Just using a long extension and a ratchet. They're all the same length. I wonder if they sell an upper, upgraded throttle body. Think they sell a ported throttle body for this car? They probably. Oh, I dropped it. See it down oh, there? Oh, you should have grabbed the magnetic holder. Oh, uh, no, I got the floor mat on the car. That doesn't mean nothing. So it just drops onto the floor mat. Yeah, it makes your life easy. Or the magnetic. We have the magnetic yeah. bowls, so I use. Yeah. Yeah, we have them. I'll just throw that in there for now. And then, last bolt. It'll be easier for us to access the water pump with the throttle body off. Because that throttle body takes up a lot of space. And I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Throttle body's off. While it's off, might as well clean it. Yeah, clean up the throttle body while it's off. Yeah, it's very dirty. It has some carbon build up, covered in oil. And it's, yeah, it has oil. How's the gasket on here look? Gasket looks good, but you can see there's a lot of oil in the throttle body. Yep, there it is. The gasket is fine, but there's a lot of oil. Now you can see the water pump. That's the water pump down there. And the water pump that's broken is right here. Yeah. So we're going to take this bracket off too, so we can get access. Which I believe, what size is that? It's a huge Torx. And then this one is a socket. The bolt directly below the throttle body is a 13. Okay. 
break that loose. It's just a nut. And then the one down bottom. The one down bottom is a Torx. You can see it right there, it's a Torx. The upper one that's not rusted. Bracket bolt is a T50. Uh, that one was tight. Yeah, but we, you didn't need a breaker bar or anything, so it wasn't really that tight. Still tight though. Took some force. Alright, put that up there. Okay. Take that off and take that off. And now your bracket is off. Put it up here. I'll go ahead and put that nut back on so I don't lose it. I'm going to have to loosen this lower hose off of here. Besides the clip holding it on. And then, let's see. We have a distribution hose down there. So, we've got all of this. Which, I believe... Comes over here. This is plug into. If you just connect this and this, these two plugs here, and this plug here. So, unplug that. And then, somebody done been over here, they wire tied it. I'll tell you, those things that slip on. There we go. And unplug those two plugs. That oil filter housing. Yeah. Or oil filter. Should I get the lower one off? That one. Goes like that. That one came right off. Look. This one. There we go. Alright. Got the blue connector off and the black connector. We'll take this one off, the alternator. Yeah, the alternator one. There it is. Push your flat blade in this little hole right here. And slide out the alternator plug. And you got one more connection up here. And that's it. And push this whole harness for the back. Out of your way. Like so. So now you got an open area. Yeah. All the wires were just tucked to the side, up in the top, all around. Now we got to disconnect the main hoses off of the water pump, which we have this distribution hose, which I believe is a plastic hose. And let's see what size bolt that is holding it on. And it is a T30. Let's see if I can get back in here. Okay. Try not to drop the boat. And then see about pulling this out. And that's out. And this has an o ring on it. There's this held in with one T30 down the bottom. Right here. This hole right here. It's a T30. Just removing the hose clamp. Yeah. So, put that out the way, and then this mounts. So there's an T30 holding the other end of the hose. I'm trying not to 
I dropped the bolt, and that's out. Now the hose is disconnected from the engine. Or where disconnected for the water pump. Now the hose, push it to the side. Yeah, push it out the way. And then you just got one more hose on the hook down the water pump over here. Yep, the last hose. We'll clip right here that we're gonna try to pop out from over here, like so. Try to clip a little bit. Yeah. I believe that should be enough. Oops, pop that back in there, like so. Pop this clip back up. And then I see about pulling this off. Ugh. You gotta pry the clip back until the end here seats right there. It won't come off, boy. You gotta pry the clip back. Yeah, enough, see? There, there you go. go. Leaked out a little bit of water, but we're not worried about it. There's one more hose in the bottom right here. Oh, so there's three off of it. That's the lower radiator hose in the bottom. And that is also held in with a clip. With another clip. So we do the same thing again. You gotta pry the clip back till it goes into the groove. And then pull it and off. Pull it off. <laughs> and it comes out pretty easy. And then we'll pull this out of the way as well. We'll try to push this over here. Like so. Just pull your hose out of the way. And then now you have access to the water pump. Don't worry about that later. Alright, that, that's the connector right there giving us problems. Temperature sensor. Yeah. With the red tab. Take that cover off so we get to the belt. That's what size that is. It's another T30. He's always talking about these ones right here. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. T30. That's the cover for the water pump. Oh. There's another bolt on top. Right here. Yeah. Give us more space. There's tons of space. No, it's not. Man. Compared to other things I've worked on. Yeah, the cover lifts straight off. It's just held in by two bolts. Yeah, just two bolts. Yep, two bolts. One on the side of the bracket and one on the top. This is the cover. It just lifts straight off. It's held in by two bolts. One T30 there and one right there. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. Let's take it off and the belt is exposed. Yeah. And then down in the bottom, you have a number 12. And that's what holds the pulley on. You need to take that whole pulley off to get the belt off, or you will not be able to remove the water pump. Breaker bar here with a 24 millimeter socket on the crank to hold it. And he's gonna use a 12 millimeter flat wrench and turn it clockwise, because it's reverse threads, Yep. to loosen the belt tensioner, right? Yeah, 12. He's just using a flat wrench in there on that 12 millimeter right there. Turn it clockwise to loosen the tensioner. It's taking off this hose clamp here because it's having a hard time getting the 12. I don't want to strip out the head on the boat. Hose clamp back and back. Get these little puny pliers that we got yep, to work with. Once you got it back, you can slip the hose off. <sighs> Use a flat blade. Yep. Let's pry the edges. Let's pry the edges all around. That's what I'm doing. So you crack it with the hose loose all around. That hose is off. I just got two more. Those two. Another two hoses in the bottom. Held in with clamps. 
fight these clamps. Ah, and they're sucky pliers. These pliers are trash. I mean, they don't got no grip on them. How did you do it? So these are the clamps down here. Oh. Yeah, squeeze them and slip them off. I'm gonna have to do it. Wiggle it off. Yeah, let me pull that one off. Let me pull that one off. I'm gonna be buying the Forge Motorsports silicone hose kit. I just didn't order it yet. I mean, all that's gonna get upgraded later on. But for right now, I just want the water pump and everything changed out so it's not leaking no more. All right, once you got those up and out, pull them off. Use a use a flat blade and pry them up. So that one out. And this one here. What's going on? Let's wiggle it until it comes off. There you go. Pull this out of the way. Just put it on the floor. So now there's more room. Yeah, now we got access. Our, our 12 millimeter bolt did not break loose. So he just slipped the belt off. But the bolt, the tensioner bolt is still attached. We're gonna try to get the water pump off first and see if we can get that bolt out after. After yeah. we've got more room to work with. So we're taking off the water pump next. And then we'll go back to that bolt after. Yeah. So two short ones and three long ones. One, two, three long ones and two short ones. For the water pump. And they're all T30. And they're all T30. Cracking them all loose right now. Switching to the Milwaukee to make the job easier. All five bolts were taken out. Whatever. Yeah, just pull the water, water pump, pump out. is out. This is the water pump. Yeah. Where's it leaking at? Doesn't sound too happy. <laughs> it's leaking somewhere. Somewhere on this thing is cracked. Yeah. I don't know where. But this is the original plastic water pump. This belt has to change, and we're going to get this tensioner bolt off. Yours might come out easy, so you might have already gotten it off earlier. Ours is not cooperating. We're setting up the new thermostat. You got your new thermostat sensor. Put the O-ring in. Put your O-ring seal in there. So lubricate your new seal and push your sensor in there. The clip that goes in, you just has to you just squeeze it and push it straight down. Yeah, this goes in like so. It presses in, and then you use the clip and put the clip down on both sides to hold it in place. Try to catch one side at a time. One side's in, other side's in, and that's it. And it should be pressed in. Like so. And that's it. So make sure you don't forget to put your seal. And then you get your... Put your seal, lubricate your seal, put it in. Then push your sensor down all the way. Then put your plastic clip in. It catches in the two slots on both either side. Both sides have a slot. And that's it. Now it's held tight. 
and it will be sealed good. Alright, so I cracked it loose. Which is a regular 12 millimeter flat wrench. I used this side. And now it's just hand tightened on there. I can loosen it with my finger. Three, four, five. So you can change the belt. It's the old belt. And we also have a new tensioner bolt. In the future, shouldn't have any problems if I ever had to take it back off. If you're going to ever change your water pump, replace all the bolts. Don't reuse old bolts. Yeah, replace this bolt. Don't reuse the old one. Yeah, that bolt was very hard to get out. My brother, he gave up, but I cracked it loose for him. Yeah, I gave up. I was just going to leave it on there. Yeah, he said leave it on there, but I cracked it loose for him. Right. And we got a brand new belt. Phoebe. And I recommend going with the aluminum water pump. Do not buy the plastic. All the flanges on here have to be cleaned up. He's probably just going to use some uh, regular scuff pad and some brake parts cleaner. Yeah, and wipe it down. Clean up all the flanges. Yeah. Once you have all your flanges cleaned up, then you can I'll begin the assembly. This brass brush works great with brake parts cleaner. Polish up the flanges where the o-rings have to seat. Before you install anything, I like this Super Lube multi-purpose synthetic grease, safe for any rubbers and everything. And you can use it on any electric connectors because it's dielectric grease. And use it on all your o-rings and seals. It even says it's food safe. It means you can eat it. I mean, not on purpose, but if you happen to eat some by mistake, it's not going to hurt you. It's food grade, dielectric, and it's good for you. So, lube up all your seals with it. Don't skimp on it. Nope, you do not want to struggle. There's a small amount of lube right there on these seals. Yep. And then also you can put this on every electrical connector you have. Every single one known to yep. man. I like to use grease on everything, so in the future if I have to disconnect something, it makes right. my life easier. Let's go ahead and slide this in here, like so. I'm gonna go from the top like this. And get that. And then lift it up. Pop this in here, like so. This car was already flushed with um, distilled water, so it's all set to refill with coolant. No, I dropped the, the o ring thing. Oh, I dropped it again. I'm struggling. But we'll probably flush it a little more. Yeah, I have another two gallons of distilled water to flush it with before I put actual coolant in it. You want to okay. slip that o-ring into that hole down there. Yeah, that's the hard part, getting that in. Once you get that in, then you're yep. good. There you go. Now well, it's in. And now you line up all your on. holes and your two pins in the top. Yep. And that's it. Your water pump's in. Now you just start catching the bolts. Yep. You got three are long ones size. and two short ones. Yeah. The two short ones go on the top here, and then one, two, three for the long bolts. The three for now. So the three long ones are in for now. I just want to make sure they catch. I'm not tightening them all the way. And then I want to catch the two in the top. All the way in the back. Yep, the two short ones by the temp sender next. All bolts are torqued. Water pump is installed. Now we can close the engine and start the car. Now, next step is uh, you got to put your we gotta put the belt, and then we put that. You gotta put your belt on first, then put your pulley with the brand new bolt.
Yeah. So let's go ahead and get the belt on. Take the new belt. Slip your belt on there. And yeah. then this Grab the new belt. belt. Goes on like that. Make sure when they put it back, the this flange. is for the outside because this is what holds the bolt in, the belt in place. Yeah, put your flange to the outside. Yeah. And then uh, just slip it back in there. That 12 millimeter bolt back on the lower belt pulley. Sure. And yeah, I got it on. Once again, my brother, he gave up, but I did it. Yeah, I said we were going to run the car without a water pump. Nah. That was my answer. <laughs> Your answer was to take the water pump back off. I like my other answer. Yeah, but I got it done. You have to push down on the, the pulley while the belt is on there and catch it on. And you can only fit two fingers in there. He'll hold the breaker bar and I'll retighten down the tensioner bolt, which is a 12 millimeter. Are we tighten the tensioner bolt there? The next thing is to put this cover back on. How's this going? The like belt this? housing. Right? Goes on yeah. like this. Yep. There we go. Now once you get that on, it's just got two bolts. Long bolt for the bottom. Yep. And a small bolt for the top. Just try to feel for it and catch them. And once again, it's T30. Everything seems mm -hmm. to be T30. Yep, I don't know why, but they have faith in the T30 bolts. That's good. I mean, it's just a plastic cover. It doesn't need to be torqued too tight. Okay, you can install the rest someday. All right, now we got the water pump in, the tension air and belt, and the plastic cover for the belt. Yep. Housing. Now what do you think we need to do? Put this sensor back on? This the one, right? Now let's clean the throttle body next. Probably. And how does this go? Oh, that's the temperature sensor. You can plug back in. Yep. Plug this in. I think it goes like that. Yeah, the red the red uh, part aims towards the front of the vehicle. Just like that. Where does this go? For the throttle body. Oh, so these are all the harnesses, right? Yeah. All of this. We'll do wires later. Just putting the bracket back on next. Just catch the top one with a nut. And hook this one. And the bottom one has a Torx bolt. Looks good still. Greasing up the O ring and pushing the hose back in to the water pump. Okay, that's good there. And you put the one bolt on it. That goes there. That goes there. And that goes with the two bolts. Yeah, two little short T30s. Uh, yeah, two T30s. One goes here. Another one goes in the back here. In the back. And that holds the plastic hose in. Now the plastic line is reinstalled. And the water pump is fully reinstalled as well. This, yeah, has to go in here. Right? Like that. There was a clip on there somewhere. Yeah. What goes on here? The clip. What goes on here? Where's that clip? Uh, it's on one of them. This one. This one goes right here. that clip. Like so. I see, it gets in the way. That's why I said do the lower hose first. And then... So he's connecting the wires first, but... We clip this clip right here. Onto the alternator. Yep. Let's see. Move that out the way. And then... See, that one go on there. And this one could go on here. And then this goes... Like so, like that. So it goes on there, here, like this. This goes somewhere. Alternator, probably. This one, like this. Yeah, alternator, like so. 
Yep. All right. So let's get these holes down here first. These two. Yep. And then these All two right. just like this. And these go to the reservoir, right? Yep. All right. And then we just gotta slip the clips back on. What you gonna do? Go ahead, do your magic. Are your pliers? Yeah, let me slip those clips back on. Yeah. I'll hold that up like that. And move this one out the way. With my pliers. This hose will be connected right here. Like so. And then... Both of those clips are back on down there. And putting this hose back on right here. Like that. And then we have this one over here. I don't know where that one goes. So the third party probably. Okay, so now we got these two. Like so. So figure them out. Which one goes to which? That's the lower. The lower. And then this is the upper. So the lower must go down to the bottom. Pull the clip out. Like so. You gotta pull the clip back and then you can slip it on. <sighs> Alright, it's on. There it is, it's in. And then you do the same with the upper. Yep, the upper else, pull your clip back until it locks. And then, get and then just push it all the way up until it's all the way in. Once it's all the way up, you push it lock it. And then it's locked in place. Tuck on it a little, make sure it's in there. Yes, that's the alternator. Put your other lower hose on. <sighs> you gotta squeeze the spring clip to pull it back. Oh yeah, where is that at? Uh. I suck with them clips. What you gotta do for these clips is Catch it good and squeeze it all the way in. If you don't do that, then you're not gonna get it on. And then just hold it and you gotta make sure you get a good grip. I like to go like this. Squeeze it all the way in. Little baby pliers. And then that's it. Very easy. Alright, what else we gotta do? We just gotta connect all the harnesses, right? So all these posts gotta slip back on this bracket. Yeah. Squeeze the black one. You gotta slide them, you gotta slide them all the Black one goes there. Yep. The green one. No, the, the wrong one. Wrong. The other green. That green one. The dark green. Yeah. Does that go from the top? Yeah. What? Dark green goes on the top. And then the other black one. This one slips back on. That goes in the yeah. bottom. And then those three connect into each other. Green to green. And then small black and the big black. Slip back on your racket. There you go. And catch your racket got, back on. It's got backward connections. Once you have that on, clothes are probably plugged it straight forward. You can't really yeah. mess up. I mean, yeah, you can't mix them up. That one must go like this, I assume. Yeah. But normally there would be, oh, there is enough. So that snaps on. You just push yeah, it. Yeah, once you hear them click. Do the bottom one. And then do the green. And for all of them, all the plugs go to the top. All the squeeze tabs. Yeah, all the clips are on the top. And you can tighten up those top. So you got all those back in. And then now just tighten up the two intake manifold short screws. Now everything's tight. All your connections there are good. All the hoses are connected. Everything looks good. This is good here. That's good there. This, I assume. Yeah, it goes like that. I this got hose slips back on to this. Yeah. Let's reclip this together here. There. Yeah. That goes. This is for this one hose left is for a reservoir. Yeah, bottom of the reservoir. I believe that's it. All electrical connectors are in except two. Two and electrical connectors yeah. and one hose. Next thing is just to clean up the throttle body before putting it on back on. We sure we got everything perfect. Nothing's missing. 
Yep, all hoses. One hose there, one hose there, one there. Bottom, upper, and lower. On the thermostat, we got this plastic fitting back in with the O-ring. And all connectors are in. Are you gonna hook up first intake hose? You gonna hook up intake hose? You gotta clean the throttle body. Oh yeah. And then the reservoir. Intake hose is like a last thing. Alright. You don't even got throttle body on. How are you gonna hook up intake hose? Do not use brake cleaner on your throttle body. Like my brother was trying to do just now. Throttle body, so spray it with the carb cleaner. You can spray it directly, kind of, uh, and then brush it with the brass brush. Then use your brush or your scrubby pad. Clean it all up till it looks good. Clean your plate, there's probably a lot of carbon buildup on it. Get everything all nice and clean and then we'll do the reassembly. We're reusing the old throttle body gasket so we're using some high tack gasket sealant on it. It's going to put a real real light coating on it and then put it on there. Let it set a little and then we'll install the throttle body. So that's what we're doing next. Go ahead. Alright, let me do it for him then. Putting the throttle body back on. It's got four bolts. Got the gasket on with the sealant already tacked up nicely, so catching the four torques bolts for the throttle body. Let's do crisscross with it. Yeah. Throttle body is reinstalled. We'll do one last check. Get the socket wrench just to make sure everything's in torqued in. Throttle body connector. Put back on. Hook up the reservoir. That's what we do next. Yeah. It's taking off our two nuts we had. Oh, I dropped it. Just kidding. All right. This goes on the bottom. You need to connect the wire hooks. first. Because the wire's long. Connect your plug. And then connect this. And then the hose. And pull that clip out. Yeah, always pull your clip back first. Alright, clips out. And then, I don't remember how this hose goes, so just guess in my way. I think it goes like this. And then, just like that. And slip Pops your grommet. Control. The grommet goes back in the hole on there. And that's it. It's in. I believe it's in. Yeah. And you just got the two nuts in the top. And your new reservoir is installed. You gotta pull your clip up first. And then you just push it. Yeah, it's in. And it snaps in. And then there's the other hose. The uh, uh, intercooler pipe first. Pull your bubble wrap out. Yeah, pull out your bubble wrap if you had that in your hose. Yeah. How to go like this, right? Yep. Or was it like this? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, those clamps would be towards the top. So it would be like this. No, it's got to be like this. Like this. It's got to be like this. Yeah, smaller end for the bottom. Yep. So put your so we'll hook this body one. in back on. Other end close to the inner cooler. <sighs> like that. There we go. It's on. Yep. Now you can Don't just forget to tighten them. Tighten your flat blades. Just use your regular flat blade. Tighten up these hose clamps. Yeah, don't leave them loose. Yeah, before four. you get wondering about boost leaks. Yeah, this hose will blow off. Look at that too. Yeah. As soon as you go take a drive, your hose will blow off. So make sure you tighten down your hose clamps. Put your reservoir hose back on. Make sure you test this side first. If the gray side goes towards the radiator. And go. the black side goes towards Just like this. the reservoir. Uh, 
Why didn't he go in? Hold on. Push. There it is. There we go. Is this one in? Yes, that one's in. That one's in? Yes, that one's in. Yep. Everything's back on. Don't forget to take the breaker bar out. Yep. We got our breaker bar still in there. And it seems like the job is complete. So he flushed the car, fully flushed the car, and now he's filling up the new pink antifreeze. He took it off? Yeah, he took it off. It's empty. Yep. He's not leaking over? Nope, no leaks. All right, let's add some more. It's up to the max now. Yep, he has it filled to the max now. So we'll cap it up. And we'll run the car till it's hot. Get to cooling fine. Start up the car. Hope for no leaks. The job is complete now. Took it for a drive. The temperature sensor was not working because when the temperature sensor tabs broke, the red tab broke, it got stuck in the plug and bent the pin down. So we had to straighten the pin and pull out the broken pieces of the connector tab, the red part, and then put it all back together and now it's working fine. Temperature sensor plug caused all the problems for us when we broke the tab on it. But now everything's working good and the job's complete, no leaks or anything, no overheating or anything.